This pisses me off more than anything else in the world. And can't anyone see the problem with that? Bail generation. Wake up. Hey everybody out there who's tuning into our channel. Um, today I just wanted to hit you up with another video and um, share something that's been on my mind for a little while uh, while I show you some of the new additions we've done to our garden here at home in Toowoomba. Uh, so I've been diving into some ebooks, right? And um, reading a few articles about the power of suggestion and hypnosis. And yeah, I know that might sound a little bit out there but um, if you can just bear with me for a little bit, uh, it's got me thinking about some of the old school ideas that might connect with our lives today and with what we do here on The Castaway Couple here on our channel. And uh, look at this rain, by the way. Isn't it amazing? We're so happy. We've had a pretty, pretty long drought here in Toowoomba. For the past few months, we've barely had any rain. We haven't seen any water. The tank's been getting really low. The lawns and the plants have been looking pretty sad, getting a bit brown. But um, anyway, getting back to the thoughts that have been buzzing around my head now, um, I thought it'd be cool to chat with all of you and share, what, share what's been on my mind. Hope that it brings you value and that you can assimilate to the things going on in our world today and some of the smaller things that are happening within our own lives. Um, but yeah, and I'll get more into what we've been doing to the garden. There's still a lot to do out the back. So yeah, we're sort of getting, you know, prepared for our relocation to the Philippines, to Dolores. The house is going really well at the moment. The boys are really working hard out there and it's coming along well. So what I'll try to do on the next video is I'll actually record the updates from the engineer when we're in a video call with him and I'll, I'll give you the latest and greatest on that. So hopefully that'll be interesting. Oh, look at that nice little bird over there. It's so cute. So if, I don't know if anybody remembers what was out here before, but we had just a couple of strangely placed trees here. We had one pretty much where this uh, citronella torch is and then a fern here in the middle and it just kind of didn't make sense. So the path was all mud. That was all just red soil. And as you know, red soil just sticks to everything. It's all clay. So I built this boardwalk just out of some treated pine, nothing fancy here and around the gate. You know, just to try and tidy the place up a bit and just make it look a little more, um, just make it cleaner, you know, easier to maintain and manage. But anyway, so let's shift gears from the garden and let's get into it. So without dancing around the bush too much, I want to discuss a topic that I believe is very important, especially in today's modern world. One that challenges the narrative of what we deem to be appropriate and the right way to conduct ourselves, the right way to live. Um, I think it goes even as deep as our thoughts and the conscious mind and the conscious state of our being that's really being targeted by certain oligarchies and um, certain agendas that I believe are designed to warp our very own beliefs. So I mentioned before about the power of suggestion and hypnosis. Um, it sounds wacky when you just say it in a sentence like that without giving it too much context. So without further ado, let's do just that. So I think that our society today is not that different from many societies and civilizations or empires that existed at any given moment in the world's history. Um, there appears to always have been a level of malevolent control 
over peoples and nations behind the scenes for what is being revealed to be nefarious reasons. At the top, there is almost some sort of demonic or ritualistic desire for power and raveling in oppression of common people that pierces through the veil. Uh, I think that we're approaching a final revolution where a person can act upon the mind of his peers, peer pressure, um, the, the need to be accepted by those that surround us. Across the ages, throughout time, there's been a persistent endeavor to control the human mind. This isn't a recent phenomenon. Uh, studies have shown and a lot of people have been very interested in mind control and the power of suggestion. It's an age-old practice. It's been around for a very long time in different forms. Since the forging of time, various methods or techniques of terrorism, more accurately put, have been employed to infiltrate and influence the human psyche. These techniques, ranging from just crude brutality to more calculated cunning ways, have been used in very effective ways to torture, imprison and constrain the individual. To manipulate not just the body, but the very essence of our thoughts. And this exploration of control, this kind of dark experiment, like mad scientist kind of vibe it gives off, continues to reveal the intricate strategies employed by controlling oligarchies in their pursuit for global dominance, over consciousness and the freedom of individual thought. And as Napoleon Bonaparte once said, and I don't know how many of you are familiar with this quote, but he said, you can do everything with bayonets except sit on them. Bayonets, guns as a more modern term. But I find that to be very, very intriguing. But if you're going to control any population for any length of time, you simply have to have some measure of consent. You can't just go in all guns blazing, you know, trigger happy. It's, it's excruciatingly difficult to see how pure terrorism in the form of violence alone can function forever. Eventually you have to admit a certain level of persuasion so people are fooled into giving consent to what is happening to them. Otherwise, the controlling power will always meet rebellion. And we see that in a lot of countries like Philippines, um, rebels in the jungle, you know, Cambodia, Mexico. Um, it's, it's a prevalent phenomenon. And I believe it's the skillful illusion of choice and enticement of safety that people willingly give up their liberties without realizing it. Um, a true manipulation of the mind and subconscious programming. Especially today with the advancement of technology, in some cases a good thing, but you know, with a screen around every corner, one in your hand, the radio, advertising billboards, and all these tools to the employ of the controlling oligarchy who have always existed, and arguably will always exist, are to get people to actually love their servitude, their imprisonment, to love their chains, and to love their captivity. This seems to me the most malevolent revolution of reality we live in today. And honestly, there seems to be a general movement in the direction of this kind of ultimate method of control by which people can be made to enjoy a state of affairs by which any decent standard they normally would not enjoy. And we can see this inner battle within society as a whole, spilling over. People reaching just breaking point, convincing themselves into happiness, while at the same time being torn apart inside without even understanding why. Without understanding their afflictions, their depressions, all the while continuing to chase that which is portrayed to them as the solution, when in reality, it's leading to their ultimate demise. Now, 
I just want to touch a little on the improvement in these techniques of terrorism. One Ian Pavlov, a great researcher, great psychologist, who made really significant discoveries on the nature of animals and human beings. And he found, among other things, conditioning, which I'm sure most of you people are aware of. That's how you train your dog, you know, a stimulus and a reward, uh, or a stimulus and a punishment. Um, these techniques applied to a human and either psychological or physical stress sinks in very deeply into the mind body of the creature and the habits or the conditioning is then extremely difficult to get rid of they seem to be embedded more deeply than any other form of conditioning that we that we know of see the key takeaway is that people are most vulnerable to suggestibility when exposed to fear and stress uh, a good example of that might be the uh, heaven and hell concept, you know, which itself was used so effectively by the Roman Catholics and how many other religious groups, which we won't even get into right now. But, you know, during the Middle Ages, the majority were willing to succumb to various forms of maltreatment because they had the notion that somebody was going to save them, whether there was you know, somebody out there that truly cared for them and for their salvation. Look, it's it's the old, old concept of fear versus hope, which interestingly enough, both concepts were pushed by the same controlling oligarchy. See, so you would, you would manufacture hell to promote the fear, and at the same time, you would be offering the solution, the hope of heaven. And I think it's very clear, thanks to all the psychological studies conducted by the world's most acclaimed scholars and professors, on the state of the human mind, there is no doubt at all that we can absolutely take this much further than was ever possible in the past. You know, even as an example in the recent history of brainwashing as applied to prisoners of war, the personnel of the Chinese Communist Party and here in the West, the debt dream, the Australian dream, the American dream, the mortgage trap where owning that which is most critical and important to the survival and what gives the identity of a person or a family, which should be a basic human right, is now clearly a luxury for the more affluent. Here we see that the Pavlovian methods that have been applied systematically and evidently with extraordinary efficacy. And now we have a large army of people that have been created who are totally devoted to the idea or a concept and, and this conditioning is so deeply rooted within the being that it's almost impossible to remove. Um, some believe it so deeply that they even express rage, you know, just pure outbursts of anger if their concepts are even challenged. And I strongly believe that these methods are truly a refinement on the older methods of terror because they combine methods of terror with methods of acceptance where a person who is subjected to a form of terroristic stress for the purpose of in inducing a kind of voluntary state of acceptance you know and this pisses me off maybe more than anything else in the world the, the famous quote that you literally hear everybody say that's just life that that's life that's, that's what life is and can't anyone see the problem with that they don't even know why they say it most of them don't even know what it means and it's a classic example of the conditioning exerted upon people to enslave them into a state of involuntary acceptance of the current state of things. It's terrorism. The devil is in the details, folks, where nobody bothers to look because it's just it's too much trouble. People are tired. Who has time for that? We're a sad people, folks. We're a failed people and a failed generation. 
and we let it happen. It's our fault and why is nobody willing to wake up? We are more interested in watching the footy, gambling with our money and drinking beer or playing video games than doing something of value with our lives. And no, your job doesn't give you any value. That's an excuse so that you can live with yourself every day. It helps you sleep at night. But we've hit rock bottom and there are exceptions to that. But I'm talking about the 95%. We are the lowest level of humanity. A species who has become inferior to those of which we were designed to look after. We've fallen short of our destiny and of our inherent potential. Hypnosis. I think we know a lot more about this subject today than was known in the past. Although people didn't know the word hypnosis, they certainly practiced it. When you look at the findings in the field of hypnosis and of administering placebos, for example, you find that about 20%, excuse me, of the population experience relief from pain when administered a placebo. However, the other 20% literally felt no change and the placebo was completely redundant and ineffective. And the remaining 60, this is the kicker, wasn't sure, the remaining 60%. This indicates that 20% can be easily hypnotized with the snap of a finger. On the other hand of the spectrum, 20% are nearly impossible to hypnotize, but the greater mass of people, the 60%, the middle batch, are prone to hypnotism, suggestion, gradually over a greater length of time. So, if one was to work hard enough at it, it was certainly possible to convince 80% of people into a hypnotic state, into an alternate reality susceptible to suggestibility and ultimate subconscious control. See, these figures are quite disturbing because they show you the fact that under the guise of an organized yet seemingly free society, we are inevitably at risk of being enslaved by dictatorship. If we were already there, we wouldn't even know it. For example, any, any demagogue who is able to get a hold of the easily suggestible 20%. And over a period of time, also when the minds of the remaining 60 is really in a position to overthrow any honest government and any honest country. I think the most incredible example by what can be done by efficient methods of suggestion and persuasion comes in the form of Adolf Hitler. For those familiar with Bullock's Life of Hitler, which is one of the books that I've actually been reading. It's an e-book, well I'm sure you can get a hard copy, but there emerges a chilling sense of both shock and awe at Hitler's diabolical brilliance. Um, and it, it's freaky. Like, he possessed an unparalleled understanding of human vulnerabilities, of our weaknesses, leveraging them with a cunning mastery that stands as a testament to the dark ingenuity of his empire. I mean, he just knew, intuitively, that this Pavlovian truth, that conditioning installed in a state of stress or even fatigue, goes much deeper than conditioning installed at any other time. This is why all of his big speeches, note, were organized at night time, where people were more tired and the programming could bypass the conscious mind, which at that time was in a state of lower activity and bypass the suggestion directly and go straight to the subconscious mind. Better instilling deeply the conditioning and altering the state of the mind of the being. Just as today, we're faced with increasing cost of living, interest rates are on the rise, being forced to work shittier jobs for less money and do more hours just to keep the lights on. As we endure a ceaseless barrage of news, wars... 50 people have been killed during an airstrike on a United Nations affiliated school in Gaza. Economic collapse. What the heck is going on down here? Uh, I don't know. All of a sudden here we started hearing screaming, bye, bye, bye. Viruses. Another COVID wave. Nuclear apocalypse. Natural disasters. Calamities. The list seemingly endless. Let me underscore a vital truth. 
This is not mere happenstance. It's not a coincidence. It is a meticulously orchestrated symphony, a design with calculated intent. There exists a malevolent agenda to further subjugate the middle class, erode basic human rights and liberties. It's a nefarious plot, a systematic effort to control and enslave, all for the callous benefit of corporate gain. A storm is on the horizon and its ominous shadow casts a foreboding gloom over our collective future, guys. Should we fail to awaken from our slumber, to reshape our attitudes and actively combat the oppression born of our own lethargy and lack of wisdom? The outlook is undeniably grim. Very grim. This is your warning. This is your wake-up call, courtesy of the Castaway Couple. And until our paths cross again, stay vigilant and stay awake. <laughs>